Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I am happy to welcome Dr. Joseph Antoon, CEO and Chairman of the Board of El Nutra, and a lifelong proponent of improving public health through health policy reform and health system management. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. I am so thrilled to welcome our guest today, Dr. Joseph Antoon, who is CEO and Chairman of the Board of El Nutra. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Antoon. Thank you for hosting me. So why is fasting so important and why are we hearing so much of it lately? Well, it is actually very critical to think about how to keep people healthier longer and practice health care rather than practice sick care. So when I was doing my rotations as a, as a medical you know, student, I discovered that we're basically waiting for someone to develop a symptom and be sick for us to diagnose that and give them a treatment. And I found that to be sick care, not health care. And all of us know that public health and prevention is the way to go but we didn't find a platform to invest in as a society and as ministers of health to invest in what is primary care. Today, we advise people to eat healthy, we advise them to exercise, but there's no real market or platform or technology that can help people live healthier longer. And I was touring the world actually, looking for such a technology and learned the first lesson, which was the way we age is really important, the quality and the pace at which we age is really important to defining when we're going to start getting diseases. So if we impact that aging process and biologically stay younger, we're going to push the onset of diseases to a later stage. And I learned that fasting is a very powerful way to actually delay this biological aging and help us live healthier longer. And I found it to be the great platform for public health and prevention and move from sick care to health care and decided to invest my time and my passion and my life into it. And how was it that you came to learn about this? It was actually a very interesting meeting. I was at the airport in Chicago, and I was sitting with uh, the CEO of the Buck Institute for Research on Aging. It's one of the biggest institute that does research on aging. And that person, that gentleman, asked me one question that changed my life. He said, Joseph, you're an expert in policy in healthcare. Why do you still consider the major four killers as diseases are different, meaning diabetes is different than cancer, than cardiovascular disease, than Alzheimer's. They're all the same. And I was like, what do you mean they're all the same? He said, they are the expression of aging. You don't get Alzheimer's, even if you have the APOE gene, you don't get it at age 20. You don't get diabetes at age 22, unless you're very obese, which we're gonna talk about that, that accelerates aging. Um, you don't get most cancer at age 24, and you're not gonna get your first heart attack at age 22. They come at later stage in life, meaning these are the failures of the organs with aging. And if we age at a better rate and with a better quality, we're just pushing that failures of these systems to uh, you know, further, further in our life. And therefore, we're going to live healthier longer, what we call health span, meaning how, much, how long can I live healthy uh, in my life, rather than to focus on uh, longevity or, or lifespan, which today, with the system that we have, we wait for us to be sick. Then they put us on pills for a long period. So we live longer, but we're living sicker longer, and no one wants that. So his question changed my life. He, he opened my mind to the concept of aging, and, it, and the body aging is the mother of all diseases. And we should do something about helping people live healthier longer with optimizing their aging process. And I asked him, what are, you know, are there technologies in aging? Can we slow down aging? And he mentioned few labs across the country and few researchers, and I actually jumped on a plane wow. the week after, and I started traveling across the country uh, from, from Chicago to Boston to New York to Boulder to LA to San Francisco, and I looked for researchers working on aging, and there are plenty actually of them, and uh, that was a pleasant surprise, and the NIH is supporting a lot of them, which is great because I think that's the biggest investment in public health. But everyone was pointing me at Professor Walter Longo at USC, and they said he has a fasting mimicking diet, a diet that mimics fasting while you're eating, which basically seems to impact the body even at the cellular level and keep it healthier, longer, slow down the aging of the, of the body and keeping the disease or postponing the onset of diseases. 
So I decided to fly and, and meet Professor Longo, and we met the first time in San Francisco, and it was the meeting of, of the hearts and minds and, and passion in life. And he was that brilliant scientist who really discovered the value of aging and fasting to slow down aging. And I was coming at that time from, I was the CEO of a company that consults in how to launch products and how to build up companies and, and, and take them global. So it was really a very complementary you know, skill and passion and we decided to partner uh, on a very long journey to first start with fasting and fasting mimicking diet, but then venture into building that aging market. How can we bring aging technologies so that investors, consumers, governments, regulatory affairs, policy comes in and defines that market and help people um, do the things that keep their body healthy, biologically young, and therefore push the onset of the four big killers that we, 87 or 90 percent of us, will die from today. And how long ago was this? That was 2013. Okay, so in the last five years, you then started El Nutra. You've, you've now put out the Prolon Fasting Mimicking Diet. And Dr. Longo has now been named one of the top 100 people in healthcare. It was Time Magazine actually named him the top 50 in the world, and top 50 influencer in healthcare around My the world. My goodness. Yeah, which is a very well deserved, I think, his footprint on humanity is going to be in billions of years added to, to humanity. I, I strongly believe in what we're doing is going to achieve that. Do you ever reflect back to that day in the airport and thank your, your buddy over I at do. the Buck Institute? I do, actually. And, and that person, you know, Brian Kennedy, is, is a very fine aging researcher. And he himself is a key opinion leader. And he sits on our board. And, and we're really like a family driving this with a lot of passion. But I think that question at that day opened my mind, and hopefully today we're opening the minds of uh, many other doctors. I myself as a doctor was trained to you know, ask questions when I see a symptom, diagnose a disease, or do some extra testing, diagnose a disease, and give a pill. This is how we were trained. And I was trained at finest institutions, starting with St. Joseph University, and then Harvard, and then Hopkins, and never really, though, opened my mind to the value of food, the value of stress, the value of sleep, the value of nutrition, the value of exercise, um, and actually the value of taking and receiving and giving love and being emotionally connected in society. But these are the main drivers of how we live healthy versus we live sick. And we all talk every day about the healthcare system going bankrupt. We all talk about, as physicians, our frustration in the clinic um, doing the same thing over and over, but not, in many cases, not resolving the problems we're seeing. Um, you know, for example, in the clinic today, we see a patient who's overweight a little bit with insulin resistance, about to become diabetic, and the best thing we can offer him is some, some advice to a certain level, but actually we know inside they're going to come back to us in a year or two, needing now a metformin and then needing an insulin injection in a few years. And this is not the way to practice healthcare, it's the way to practice sick care. And we need to equip the physician and invest more in the training of doctors and, and nurses and dietitians and everyone in how, what should we do today to look at that human being from a 360 degrees, their stress, their sleep, their economic situation, their worries, their weight, and then help them revisit that lifestyle to stay healthier longer and not need a medication uh, or a treatment down, down the road. So what differentiates the fasting mimicking diet from intermittent fasting and all these other fasts that are out there? Yeah, so you know the entire story behind the connection of fasting and aging and diseases started at USC, the University of Southern California. And almost 22 years ago, USC had a great idea, and, and it comes from the brilliancy of Professor Walter Longo and his team at the Longevity Institute. This is one of the oldest longevity institutes in the, in the country. And they start thinking about aging, and again, the theory that it's not by accident that we get you know, a first heart attack at later stage in life and Alzheimer's at later stage in life. They started to understand the process of aging, how a cell ages, and what tells a cell to grow in biologically versus to slow down biologically. And Professor Longo cornered two pathways in the cell that are actually linked to cellular growth and cellular aging. Another researcher cornered the third pathways, and the, the third pathway. And when, when now 
they understood at that time how a cell ages. They wanted to find interventions to help the cell stay healthier longer or, or decrease the pace at which the, 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 the cell gains damage or age in an unhealthy way. And it turns out that at, that at the same time they were working on calorie restriction, long-term calorie restriction, and long-term calorie restriction showed that it could slow down that process, but at the same time you lose muscle, you lose bone mass, etc., because you're deprived on the long term. And based on Walter observation on what happened after you refeed after long-term calorie restriction, he noticed that you can actually help the body with fasting, which is, if you think about it, fasting is a very acute and severe calorie restriction. Instead of going long uh, and be restricted, which most diets suggest today, and, and part of, or the main reason for why most diets fail is you have to do them every day, and therefore you have to, you're gonna quit, obviously, one day you go back to, 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 to your former state. In part of the failure of most diets and the chronic calorie restriction is that, again, you, you, compliance is, is, is difficult and you lose muscle and bone, you deprive your body on the long term. So the brilliant idea was, can we go on a more severe signal, which is full fasting, but then you need few days only to get the, the benefits of what you would otherwise get for a long term chronic calorie restriction, and hopefully without the side effects, because now you're not depriving your body on the long term. So the idea started like, you know, as such, let's test a few hours of fasting, what does it do to the body, and then a day, then two, then three, then four, and five. And there was a very positive and major discovery done then, which is fasting doesn't only impact the body from a weight and metabolic perspective, it actually cellular. impacts the cells, right. and, and, and it double impacts the cells. So the main discovery was if you fast for five consecutive days, which is what we call periodic fasting, so for a period of five days. Um, and, and I always use the analogy of, you know, the body fasting is like the company with no funds, right? The first thing, if you're a CEO, you don't have funds, you're gonna go and tap into the reserve. You go to their bank account and then you pull in your reserve. And the body does the same thing. So the first two days of fasting, the body is breaking down fat, that's your reserve, and ask the liver to do neoglucogenesis, which is produce sugar or dump your reserve as well in the blood so that we nourish the, the cells and the body. That's, that's enough for a day or two, but then the body says, okay, again, going back to the CEO leading company, if you stay on a longer term with no funds, you start restructuring the company. You want to increase efficiency with the way how you use funds in the company. It's a great so, analogy, by the way. So the body does the same thing. Right. It goes to the cells now and says, okay, I cannot bring you outside calories anymore you find internally the debris and consume those, optimize your operation, your function. We call that autophagy, meaning the cell eating itself or optimizing its own performance, or so cellular repair. Autophagy in 2016 won the Nobel Prize in medicine. Um, it, is, it is a phenomenon that happens with fasting at day two and three. So it is great to ask the cell to, to, to eat the inside and optimize it for its, its performance, but again, it's part of the still the consumption and the destruction, if you want. Now, the, the big discovery is that after day four and five, going back to the CEO of the company, and now he's pre-bankruptcy, he has to, he restructured, he or she helped, you know, increase efficiency, still not enough. Then, unfortunately, you have to lay off some people, and you have to keep the superstars to keep the operations to be lean and, and in high efficiency. And this is what the body does. It, it, it gets rid of the cells that are old, that have DNA damage because they're consuming calories without the right output, and pushes the stem cells to replace elderly cells, or uh, uh, the stem cells, every organ has stem cells that actually are uh, at a younger biological age. And they're there for reparation, they're there for, you know, after a physical damage. A very simple analogy, if you cut, if you have a cut in your skin, and you know, it heals itself. You don't need to take a pill for it because the cells, the basal cells they replicate, they right. regenerate. And we never thought about diseases in the body and the aging of the body being actually a damage that, that the stem cell can repair as well until we learn that from fasting. So, so the body on day four and five is actually saying I'm pre-bankruptcy and I have to let go some of the inefficient cells. I have to find any disease to repair that, this is all on inefficiencies that are getting me closer to death. This is all a protectionist method that the body uses and uses the stem cells to do reparation and regeneration. So day four and five, it's very important to not fast just you know, for 
two or three days or because then you're doing the autophagy that which is which is a good process of helping cellular repair but it's still on a part of the destructive uh, pathway the reconstruction and the stem cell flourishing happens and on day four and five so that research which again took almost 20 years wow. to discover the aging processes at the cell the role of fasting the five days of fast being the gold standard of the regeneration you know, a lot of funds invested into that. The NIH, National Institute of Health, and the NIA, the National Institute of Aging, were the major funders of these projects with the University of Southern California, and we thank them because I think that money was a very, very impactful investment on society um, led to this discovery. Now, we were very excited, or the scientists were very excited about that discovery, and we wanted to see whether fasting helps either it helps cancer treatment because the regeneration that happens with the, with the stem cell happens in the blood as well, and you have new white blood cells that can attack cancer cells. And another theory is if you fast a cancer cell, once you have cancer, that's the fastest growing organ. So fasting cancer cells will slow the, the, the growth of cancer. So the, the scientists at USC partnered with Mayo Clinic and they embarked on a, on a human trial on cancer and fasting, but they couldn't recruit people to fast on water for five days and it was very difficult to convince them and to comply and therefore again filed grants with the NIH and got the funding to develop what's today called the fasting mimicking diet which is a program of food a nutritional program that was heavily studied to nourish the body and enhance fasting enhance the benefits of fasting while actually the cell not recognizing the food and staying in a fasting mode so it's, it's an oxymoron. You keep your body in a fasting mode, but you're feeding your body at the same time, which optimizes the fasting because, again, you're not taking your body into full bankruptcy. You're actually helping the body to optimize the positive side of fasting while not having the side effects of fasting. You know, fasting on water for five days comes with a lot of headaches, come with a, a high risk of formation of stones in the gallbladder, and it's difficult to comply with. When you're eating the food, your gallbladder is squeezing, so you don't have that risk or it's, it's diminished. Uh, you're eating food, you're getting your macro and your micronutrients. It's much easier to comply with. And what we discovered lately is that it even enhances the value of the fast and, and induces changes in the microbiome and the leaky gut. So it improves the body not only from a metabolic weight, but now cellular and microbiome level, which is exactly what we want. And this is not to say it's a magic that we, we discovered from scratch. We discovered how to mimic fasting, but the big, the master orchestra that aligns the body to optimize performance and reverse this biological age came from hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution. We lived as humans, if you want, 99% of our existence on Earth was, was with a scarcity of food. We didn't have access to food the way we have it today and we lived for most of our existence on planet Earth with fasting. So fasting became part of us and part of how we evolved to embrace it as part of our diet. And then when food became available, the major five religions actually have one word in common, which is fasting. And so we carried that practice even when food became available up until the last 50, 100 years where we became less religious and at the same time food became abundant and we had a lot of theories about eat multiple times a day and and then we concentrated sugar into dessert and we concentrated and made meat cheap, so high, high protein intake, animal protein intake. This pushed our aging process. This helped us to store fat and to be 60 years old when we're 50 and to be 70 when we're 60 and started getting uh, the onset of early onset of diabetes, of Alzheimer's and this epidemiology, epidemic of, of cancer that we're facing today. We do believe it's due to the changes of diet primarily, but also sedentarism, stress, sleep, and, 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 other, um, and other lifestyle changes, which we quickly embraced in 50 years without our body adjusting or adopting to those. So because of that fasting mimicking diet impact on the cellular, not only the weight and the metabolism, but the cellular regeneration, um, University of Southern California and we as a neutral licensed that from them, they received the first and only patent in history Waiting five years for it, this past July 2018, we got the patent on promoting tissue and organ regeneration from the stem cells, longevity, and health span. This is the first time we're very excited that a product, a technology in the market called the fasting mimicking diet, and 
you mentioned the word prolon. This is what we named the first fasting mimicking diet after because it promotes longevity. We called it prolon. Again, it took us a good 20, 20 years and, and millions of dollars to get the ingredients. The, the fasting mimicking diet is 66 ingredients. Mm. And then it has pills and, and, and liquids and it's carefully formulated to not only mimic fasting but enhance fasting. So, and, and, and match your circadian rhythm, your sleep, and optimize your transition through autophagy and then the stem cell regeneration. It's a very complicated te you know, nutrition technology um, and this is what we call it, it's a Nutritech, uh, you know, like the biotech. So we really don't advise people to go and try to cook something similar. Number one, it's, it, they're not going to reach what it is. And number two, what we are concerned with is that if they undercook, they're going to risk being hypoglycemic or, or going under and depriving your body. And if they over provide the, some of the ingredients or some of the calories, then you're actually not fasting, you're just going on a, on a calorie Eating. restriction and you lose right. the benefits. So um, I think we took a lot of care of building this kit and we tried to price it almost as equal as what otherwise you would pay for food. And this is going to save you the time to cook, to buy, to go and to park and all that. So it's actually a money saver to invest into it and actually do it part of your lifestyle rather than thinking I'm buying an extra product. And the recommendation is once every three months? So uh, it depends. Um, I'm going to take two profiles and I'm going to tell you what the, the two, if you want to extreme. So if you really want to go on a fasting mimicking diet because you're a little bit overweight, because you have some level of insulin resistance and some metabolic factors that you want to try to maintain a healthy level of, then you do it once every month for three months just to, just to, you know, to, to improve that, that, that status and, and reach your goal. And then you start alternating doing it once every two or three months. So if you have that weight-related and metabolic-related and, 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 and inflammation in the body that you want to kind of, you know, maintain healthy level of, then we, we recommend you do once, meaning five days a month for three months, and then you start alternating. On the other side, if you're a younger, healthy, fit person and you just want to do the fasting mimicking diet to reboot your body, to optimize the stem cell, to repair the cells, then you can do it once every three or four months. So basically, two, three, or max four times a year. We, we, we don't push the diet to be done every month or, or continuously for anyone, basically, unless you really have that overweight, resistant overweight perspective and metabolic issues that you want to try to, to maintain at a healthy level. Um, we, do, we do recommend these folks start with three repetitive cycles over three months, so 20, five days of fasting mimicking diet, 25 days you go back to your normal diet, five days, 25, five, 25, and then you remeasure. If you reverse that case, then you can start alternating. Otherwise, you can stay a little bit longer on it. What are the risks involved, or are there any? So uh, the risk with the diet is exactly the same as a, being in a low-calorie setting, meaning you're going to get, some people get headache, some people get uh, uh, feel weak, especially on day three. Day three is, is we call it the bankruptcy day, is, when the, the, is the day where we say burning fat isn't enough, uh, eating the inside of a cell is not enough. We need to call the stem cells Irritability to come for help. Irritability will kick in. Yeah, this is where the red flag says, okay, I'm going to start. Stay away. <laughs> I'm going to start, yeah, I'm going to call for the. So day three is, and, and you know, I mean, it, ha it, it is a difficult day, but at the same time, it means, you know, the product is working for you. It means you're really dip, digging deep, repairing, and then getting ready for stem cell to, to their flourish and circulate in the blood and help you repair. Um, so it's really the, the, the side effects are related to the fact that it is a low calorie diet, meaning the, as we said, the headache or feeling, you know, feeling the hunger. Is coffee allowed? So, so we recommend to do max one cup a day. Uh, now, if you want to drink decaf, that is allowed, but there's a suspicion that caffeine in the coffee sends a positive stimulus to the parasympathetic system and giving a sense of eating. So it might perturbate a little bit with the fasting track. Um, therefore, we recommend one cup max a day. If you need more, go for decaf. Um, so this is, um, yeah, that's the recommendation with coffee. It has tea, the diet has tea with no caffeine that was tested to mimic fasting. So, so I heard it's delicious teas. too. It's, uh, we, we, you know, in, in the food business, no matter what you do, no matter what value you have, if it doesn't look good and taste good, it's not going to be adopted. So we invested a lot of time and funds and expertise globally uh, for, for the food to be presented in a very nice way and for it to be delicious. 
it does score very, very high on taste. Uh, compliance rate are very, very high. Uh, the first cycle is sometimes difficult for some people who are really attached to food, who cannot just do that jump of, of doing a, a fasting mimicking diet. But that difficulty drops significantly at cycle two, three, and, and onwards. It, it is backed now by trials on aging and a patent on promoting longevity and health span. Yeah, that was, that was a milestone, I think, achievement in the evolution of public health. It is reconnecting healthcare with, with what it should be rather than continuing to be a sick care. And, um, and, and we are helping the body to reconnect with what it used to do, which is eat and then not to eat. And when, when you don't eat, you actually heal and fix yourself from the inside. This is what we discovered. So by reconnecting the body with what it used to live under the same circumstances with eat and then fast and then eat and then fast, we're actually also now reconnecting healthcare with what is, it is meant to be, which is keeping us healthier longer. How are you educating the physicians and practitioners out there to implement this into their practice to treat their patients? Yeah, this is a great question. You know, it wasn't easy. We, we launched Prolon two years ago. And two years ago, in, in, it was September 21st, 2016. At that time, if you say the word fasting, nobody would even react to it or would ask you, why do I need to starve my body? It had that negative connotation. We didn't, we as doctors, and, and I'm a doctor so I can speak for, for our community, um, we didn't even get a, you know, when I graduated as a, as a, as a, as a physician, I didn't even get a, a, a course in nutrition yet in fasting, you know, so it was a complete unknown and we had to launch that concept of fasting has benefits. Now we can mimic it, mimic it with food so it doesn't have that starvation aspect to it. Uh, people will be eating natural, plant-based, non-GMO, gluten-free, very high quality nutrition program uh, while they're fasting. So we took that, that, if you want, negative aspect of starvation out. And the economics of the Prolon diet? It's not much more expensive than they would be paying for their normal food if they were to buy groceries, correct? Yeah, we, we almost price it to match what we spend on food for five okay. days. So, um, um, you know, the price is between the 200 and 250 dollars, which is practically what we pay. Um, you know, I live in Los Angeles and I pay a little bit more than that to eat food for five days. Um, and definitely if we go out for a restaurant, you know, visit, etc., we would pay more than that. But uh, educating the physician was really a mission of first helping them realize the impact of nutrition on their patients, which we all know as physicians. It's not a new concept to us. But we, were, we, were, we felt aversion versus that nutrition field because every day you hear about a new diet, a new idea, no science backing it and no proof. And then we as physicians are trained to be evidence-based, to practice evidence-based medicine and, and read articles that are randomized, that are well, well conducted and, and with solid statistically significant results. You don't see that in 99.9% .9 of any nutritional program out in the market. So as physicians, we feel very frustrated that we have patients in front of us that we know food and nutrition could impact their life tremendously, much more than the pill we're giving them. But we were deceived by that nutrition market because it's full of different ideas that are just with time proven wrong and wrong again. El Nutra, in partnership with USC, we took a completely different route. We said, how can we bring biotech level of research to nutrition so that actually we have enough evidence, we have enough science to convince a physician to take action. And that was exactly what we did. 22 years of research at multiple universities. Now we're in partnership with 12 universities. The National Institute of Health, which is the biggest, you know, um, if you want the, 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 the credibility and the reviews the of the grants and the authority and the, and the stamp that this is scientific uh, is, backing, is backing the research. So what do you envision or, or how do you, what do you hope to see um, a few years down the road in terms of perhaps government or the insurance companies or whatnot yes perhaps supporting something like this for reimbursement? Definitely, I, you know, that's a big hope uh, that we have down the road is that we have reimbursed what costs us a lot to help us live a month or two or three. You know, most, the biggest chunk of our healthcare budget goes for the last year of life. 
and just to try to extend that by a few days or a few months and extend the suffering coming from it. And we strongly, um, we're, we're gonna invest a lot and spend a lot of time explaining the value of the fasting we're making night in not only for an insurance or a payer to keep people healthier longer, that, that is the ultimate goal of every government in healthcare is to well, keep people healthier. Well, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be and it is. Yeah. It is in the minds of the leaders but again, there's no platform for them to, to go after. And investing in longevity is always a difficult trade-off where today, if you're a minister or you're CEO of, a, of an insurance company, if, if you feel you're investing for somebody to avoid having a disease 10 years down the road, you're not seeing the benefits right away. So it's not an easy investment for them. But the fasting mimicking diet has a direct benefit on, from an at least metabolic and weight perspective that is warrants the investment today and recouping the, the benefits today. Um, the biggest line item budget today we have is, is diabetes and obesity, whether on the national government, on the Medicare, Medicaid, or on private insurance, it is the biggest problem. And what we're doing, we're waiting for these individuals to become diabetic, to go on oral medicine, then to go on insulin, and then to have the side effects, and then to have to lose a kidney or to lose a leg. And this is where the money comes from reimbursement and hundreds and millions of do dollars invested. So we definitely are going to present this to governments and insurance and we definitely hope for a reimbursement, not only for them to keep people healthy longer, but actually it's gonna save them, save them a lot of uh, uh, money downstream that they have to spend when it's inefficient uh, expenditure. You might have to put your public policy hat back on and yes. march down to the FDA. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Antoon, for joining us. Thank I you very am much. excited. I would like to try it myself, and yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And, thank and you very much. Thank you very much.